Why is data so powerful? Hello, my name is Eric Normand, and this is my podcast. Welcome. In the last episode, I went through a debate, argument, disagreement between Alan Kay, who was the creator of Small Talk, legendary touring award winner and everything, created the GUI, object-oriented programming, and Rich Hickey, who is the creator of Closure. And the debate was about data. Alan Kay was asking whether data is a good idea. And Rich Hickey said it's undoubtedly a good idea. It's an old idea, and there's... You, you can't do anything without data. He missed the point of the question. It was like a research question um, that was trying to free your mind from, from using the, uh, from sticking to the ideas that we've become accustomed to. Nevertheless, I think that there is um, an interesting question in there uh, about why given that data does have all the problems that came up in the discussion with Alan Kay, why is it, meaning it has to be interpreted, if you got some signal, you got scribbles on a piece of paper, it's just ink on paper, you don't know what it means unless you know how to decode it. You need a lot of context, right? But, so why when I'm programming in Clojure and dealing with just data, why does it feel so natural, so right, so powerful? Where does the power come from? So I was in a discussion after the last episode uh, with a lovely, lovely listener named uh, Benoit, and I realize that Clojure has made a very pragmatic decision. So yes, Smalltalk is like a research language. It was created to explore ideas. And Alan Kay's question was about exploring a new idea. And Clojure is very practical, right? It was made to solve problems that Rich Hickey was encountering in software development and he couldn't find a language that solved those problems well so he had to create his own. And one of those problems is that we, we live in a world of where one of the most reliable things that we have is data, right? We're, we're talking about files on a Unix file system, super reliable, um, JSON, from an API that you can always get more data, you can always get it in a certain standard format, even XML files. It's, you know, we're not talking about the format here, we're just talking about the, the reliability of it, that it can be transmitted, it can be read, it can be processed. Databases, you know, you can always just get rows from a database. This is a world we live in today. It's the, it's the practical reality. And we don't live in a world where we can assume that someone can run our code, that something we write here is going to be able to run over there. We can't send the ambassador, for example. And so we also live in a world where a lot of languages add complexity by adding layers they do like object relational map air, mapping trying to fit this thing that's data into an object oriented framework there's all sorts of modeling issues in there and because data is so reliable closure is taking a i mean a pretty controversial stance and just saying well we're just going to operate there we're going to do as little uh, 
you know, adding on top of that. We're not going to force some different model. We'll just use data and we'll just have a bunch of powerful tools for operating there. And so I think that's where closure gets its power from. Uh, it's a very pragmatic choice of today in the world we live in with the data, you know, the systems that are available. Data is a reliable thing. It's a known thing. It has a long history. And by sticking there and making sure that we can process it easily, efficiently, and um, expressively, then we got a big advantage over other languages that try to turn it into something else, try to adapt it poorly to a different model of computation. So I think I just wanted to bring that up that I think that um, this research idea of Alan Kay is, is brilliant and it should be explored. Uh, I often uh, go off and think about what it might look like to, to do something like that. Uh, and I'd love to spend 10 years just noodling on that and, and coming up with prototypes and things. Uh, but in the world where we have to make money, uh, where our software has to work and get a job done, and the fact that there's just data all over, then that's one of the most reliable things we have today um, in terms of ability to store it, ability to transfer it to another system, read it on different operating systems, in different environments. It is a very practical choice. And I can imagine a day where perhaps that isn't the, the practical choice anymore. But today, it seems very reasonable uh, to, have, to have that stance of we're just not going to put too many layers on top of data. We're just going to make it easy to get the data in, make it easy to transform it into some other shape, process it, do some aggregation or what have you, and send it on out. And it's, it's just a practical reality. I don't know what else to say. Um, and I enjoy it uh, because it does feel powerful. It does feel like um, it's the right choice for a lot of problems. And um, yeah, so that's, that's where I'm, I'm happy when I have to do practical, pragmatic things that can't wait for a research agenda to pan out. All right, this has been a short one. Uh, my name is Eric Normand. Thank you for listening. And as always, rock on.